Hello everyone, welcome back to Mequatics. So for today's video, we are looking at this year's trial paper for Pahang Paper 1. So to be honest with y'all, I didn't really do much trial papers for Pahang for the previous years. So if you want to know whether the difficulty of the previous year and this year is that a change or not, this one I'm not quite sure. But if we compare to the other states papers and if we're just looking at paper one i would say pahang has the same difficulty as kerda and difficult than the sabah and the selangor paper so why i think it's a bit difficult this year for pahang is because of the questions so some of the questions need a lot of workings compared to a typical paper one question right because paper one is for questions that has shorter answers these are actually short answer questions but somehow some of the questions need the student to write a lot of workings which I feel is a bit unfair for Pahang students compared to the other state papers right but it's okay here I will share you all the tips and tricks to solve these kind of questions in the most fast way and the most efficient way possible all right so for this year I also will be doing something different which is to Add this unique label to those questions that appear more often in the trial paper compared to the typical questions that we have seen in our textbook or our exercises books because these kind of questions I would say is much more complex and we need to put more focus onto these questions so when SPM comes out similar question we can able to solve them efficiently Right, so without further ado, let's go through the discussion of this paper. Our first question coming from the coordinate geometry chapter, and in the diagram here, we are given a rhombus. Right, so rhombus is actually a kite shaped polygon. So, as you can see here in this polygon, it has a shape of a kite. Right, shape of a kite. And in the question, they gave us the equation of these two straight lines, which is line AB and BC, right? Which is this line and this line. And both of them have their own equations. And the question also says that this straight line DB, all right, this straight line DB is not drawn in this diagram. So you can imagine that we are drawing a line joining the points of point D and B. Right, so there will be a imaginary line here. Right, but here it says it extends to point N. So it means that this line it will exceed the rhombus, right? Will exceed the polygon, or meaning jump out of the polygon. So the line would be something like this. Right? It will exceed the rhombus until it reaches point N. But how far does it reach to point N is depending on the ratio here. Right, so db to bn is 2 to 1, which means d to b is 2 parts, b to n is 1 part. Right, so now in part a, how can we find out the coordinates of n? Alright, so if we focus on point n, right, it is actually at this extended line. Right, and this extended line, it only has the ratios within the line. So now the question is, with the ratios given, how are we going to find the coordinates of a point? All right? So let's recall back all of the formulas that we have learned in this chapter. Using ratios, find coordinates. So there is only one formula that can help us to do this, and it is also one of the formulas in the formula sheet, which is formula 41 a point dividing a segment of a line, right? So how this formula works is, right, let's say we have this line, right? And then let's say the end points here are points X and Y, right? So this is a line segment X, Y. And here, let's say within the line itself, there is another point, right? So let's say, oops, sorry. So let's say here is Z, right, Z. 
n, we are given the ratio from x to z and z to y. So let's say the ratio is 3 to 2. So using these ratios and using this formula, we can find out the coordinate of point z. So meaning the coordinates of the point which is within the line, right, which is point z. So if we go back to our situation here, it's a bit different because we are not finding the coordinates of the point which is within this line, which is point B. We are not trying to find the coordinates of B. We are trying to find the coordinates of N, right? Coordinates of N, one of the N points of this line, right? Which means if we go back to this example here, we are not trying to find Z. We are trying to find Y. All right, so if we want to find the coordinate of y or coordinate of n through this formula, we first need to find out the coordinates of x and z, which means we need to find out the coordinates of d and b. So d here is already given, so it's fine. But how about b? B is not given, right? So here, what we are going to do is before we find out the coordinate of n, we first need to figure out the coordinate of B, right? So how do we find out the coordinate of B? Right, so if you focus on point B, right, it is actually also at other two lines, which is line AB and line BC. And if we imagine we combine both of these lines, actually point B is their intersection point, right? Their intersection point. So, there are a few ways to find out the coordinates of the intersection point, but we need to have the equations of those lines, which in this question we are already given. All right? So, let us use these two equations to help us find the coordinate of B. All right? So, I'm going to put these two equations here and let's rearrange them. So how do we rearrange them is basically to move x to the left side, right? For both of the equations, we move x to the left side, or meaning the only thing on the left side is x, right? Why I do so is because later when we have the x values of these two equations, then we can compare them and to find out the coordinates. So now we can compare these two values or meaning combine these two values to form one equation and find out the value of y or the y coordinate, right? Because in this equation, there is only y. And why we can combine these two things is because these are the values of x, right? So since both of them are x, then I can just form them into an equation. Okay, so now to find out the value of y, what we're going to do is to move everything that has y to the left side, those that does not have y move to the right side. So the y coordinate is three. Okay, so now with the y coordinate, what we're going to do to find the x coordinate is to substitute this value of three into either one of these two equations. Okay, so let's say we choose this equation, right? So the y here will change to 3 and we put this into the calculator. We can find out the value of x is negative 2, which means that the b coordinate is negative 2, 3. But if you look closely, right, the x coordinate of point b and the x coordinate of point d is actually the same, right? The same which means this line right is actually a vertical line. It's a vertical line, which means all of the points which are at this line here, all of their x coordinates are the same, which includes point n. Okay, so I'm going to put a note here. So later we see whether this x coordinate is negative two or not, right? Because in theory, B and D have the same x coordinate, so everything which is on this line 
will also have the same coordinate, right? The same x coordinate. Okay. So now we have found out the coordinate of b already. So now let us use the formula here to find out the coordinate of n. Right, but first, let us understand how are we going to use the information that we have to substitute inside this formula. Right? So let us understand left side and right side, what are we going to substitute? So let's start off from the left side. So x and y here is actually the coordinates of the point which is within the line. So meaning we are going to put the coordinates of z inside here. So back to our question here, we need to substitute the coordinates of the point which is within this line, which is point B, right? So we are going to substitute the coordinates of point B on the left side of the equation. Okay, why this negative 2 and 3 shouldn't be on the right side is because this is the point which is within this line. And this formula helps us to find out the coordinates of the point which is within this line. Okay, that's why x and y would be coordinates of point B. Okay, so now once point B is done, we can look at the right side of the equation here. Right, so the right side of the equation here is all of the things that is left here, right? which is the coordinate here, the ratio, and the coordinate of n, right? So coordinate of n, because we still haven't found out yet, so let us put x and y first, okay? So on the right side here, I think in schools, teachers have also learned, sorry, have also taught this before, which is the way we substitute the values inside will be using the cross multiply way which means these two ratios will multiply with its opposite point, right? So means for the value one here, it will multiply with its opposite point, which is point D. And the two here, it will multiply with its opposite point, which is point N, right? So this is called cross multiply. All right, so let's start off with the first part of the right side here, okay? And for the n here, n is just one of the ratios, right? So let's start off with the top ratio, right? Which is one, okay? So n here would be one, and we are going to multiply with its opposite point, right? But here says it's x1, meaning the x coordinate of the first point, right? So let us assume that point D is the first point, right? So we are going to use the x coordinate of this point, which is negative two. Right? And then we are going to add up with m. So m is the other ratio, which is 2. And it will multiply with the x coordinate of point n, which is x, which we don't know yet. Right? And for the denominator, we just add the two ratios together. So it's 2 plus 1. Right? So this is for the x coordinate part. Okay, so this first point, sorry, this first part is the x coordinate part. And for this part, it's actually the y coordinate. So everything is the same. It's just now we are using the y coordinates, right? So for the n here would be one, one multiply with the first point's y coordinate, which is negative one, right? And then we're going to add up with two multiply with the y coordinate of point n, which is y, right? And then here at the bottom, we are going to add the two ratios together. Okay, so now let us simplify the right side of the equation here. So it would be something like this. So now to find the value of x and y, which is the coordinates of n, we are going to compare the things inside the bracket, right? Which means the left side of this bracket here, we are going to compare with the left side of this other bracket, okay? And the right side of this bracket here, we are going to compare with the right side of the other bracket. So we can form equations and find out the value of x and y. Okay, so now here we are finding the coordinates of n, right? So we cannot end like this. 
what we need to do is to write it into the coordinate format, right? So the final answer here, it needs to be in a coordinate format and we can write it in this way. N bracket, negative two, five. And for part B, we need to find out the equation of straight line AD, which is actually this line, right? This line here. So like any other straight line, it will always follow this y equals to mx plus c format, right? Because this is the equation of a straight line, right? So to form that equation, we just need to figure out what is the value of m and what is the value of c. Okay, so m and c again is the gradient and c is the y-intercept, right? So let us start off finding the value of m. Okay, so if we look at this diagram here, there is not a lot of information that says the gradient of this line, right? But we can look at what is the shape of this polygon which we mentioned just now, it's a rhombus, right? A kite-shaped polygon. So this rhombus has a very important characteristic, right? There are actually pair of parallel lines here. Two pairs of parallel lines here, which are line AD and line BC. And another pair is line AB and line B, sorry, line DC. Okay, so there are actually two pairs of parallel lines. And we know that for parallel lines, both of their gradients would be similar, right? Which means if you want to find out the gradient of AD, it is actually equal to the gradient of this line, which is line BC. Right? Because both of them are parallel lines. Okay, so how do we find out the gradient of this sign BC is actually just rearranging this equation because it's already given, right? So what we are going to do is we are going to rearrange this equation in a way to follow y equals to mx plus c, right? Because we can find out the value of m. Right? So what we're going to do is, according to the y equals to mx plus c, y is the only thing on the left side. So let us do that. So for the x and the negative 4, we are going to move to the other side first. All right? And the 2, we are going to divide with these two values. Right? So now, y is the only thing on the left side, and if we compare the value of the gradient, is actually negative 1 over 2, right? So the gradient of this line would be negative 1 over 2, okay? So we have found out the gradient already. But how about C? Right, so for C, because on this line itself, there is a point and the coordinates of the point is given, which is negative 2 and negative 1, and these are the values of x and y. So why not we use the value of x and y here, substitute inside here, and we use the gradient value that we have found just now, put inside here, and find out the value of c. Okay, so it will be something like this. The x value will be negative 2, the y value will be negative 1, the m here would be negative 1 over 2, right? So you rearrange the equation here and there, you can find out the value of c is negative 2. So with the m and the c's value, we can form the equation for line AD, right? Which is y equals to negative 1 over 2, x minus 2.